You don't have trouble playing games or scrolling through your phone. In fact, you could sit in front of a screen for hours without losing focus. But try studying for just 30 minutes, and suddenly it feels hard. Spending an extra hour on your side business doesn't sound very exciting either. Here's the strange part. You already know that studying, exercising, or building a business pays off more in the long run. Yet you still choose TV, games, or social media instead. The reason is simple. One set of activities feels effortless and rewarding right away. The other takes more energy and focus. Most people don't realize their daily habits are rewiring their brain chemistry, but not everyone struggles equally. Some people study daily, stick to workouts, and build side projects consistently. Why is it easier for them? And more importantly, can the rest of us make hard tasks feel easier? The answer lies in a brain chemical called dopamine. Many people call it the pleasure molecule, but that's not quite right. Dopamine doesn't create pleasure, it drives desire. It makes you want things, and that desire motivates action. I used to spend hours gaming, but studying for 20 minutes felt impossible. Sound familiar? To see its power, look at classic rat experiments. In one study, researchers wired electrodes to a rat's brain. Each time the rat pressed a lever, its reward center was stimulated. The effect was extreme. Rats pressed the lever for hours, ignoring food and sleep until they collapsed. Then researchers did the opposite. They blocked dopamine release in the reward center. Suddenly, the rats lost nearly all drive to act. Even walking to drink water seemed like too much effort. They wouldn't eat unless food was placed in their mouths. They still enjoyed the taste, so pleasure was intact. But without dopamine, they had no motivation to seek rewards on their own. The lesson, dopamine doesn't just create pleasure, it creates drive. And the same patterns show up in humans. Your brain sets priorities based on how much dopamine it expects. Small dopamine releases don't spark much motivation. Big ones push you to repeat the activity again and again. Almost anything tied to a reward releases dopamine. But if your brain doesn't expect a quick payoff, the release is weak. For example, before eating comfort food, your brain spikes dopamine because it expects pleasure, even if you later regret it. The brain doesn't care if the reward is harmful, it only cares about getting more. This is why addiction is so powerful. Substances like cocaine and heroin create unnatural dopamine spikes. The brain learns to crave that rush, making the cycle harder to resist. But the same principle applies to everyday behaviors. Drinking water triggers dopamine too, just in smaller amounts. The biggest surges come from unpredictable rewards like slot machines. You might lose many times, but the hope of a big win keeps you playing Today, the digital world creates the same loop. Social media, video games, and internet pornography all deliver high dopamine hits. Each scroll, notification, or new video works like the rat pressing the lever. Your brain chases the next reward. Every scroll, every notification, every game session is teaching your brain what to crave. You might think, so what? It's not hurting me. But here's the problem. Your body works on homeostasis, always seeking balance. When something shifts your internal state, the body adapts. Temperature is a good example. If it's cold, you shiver to warm up. If it's hot, you sweat to cool down. The same balance applies to chemicals like dopamine. Think of spicy food. You need more overtime to feel the same kick. When you flood your brain with high dopamine, your receptors adapt by becoming less sensitive. This builds dopamine tolerance. Over time, high dopamine feels normal and smaller releases barely register. That's why once tolerance builds, low dopamine tasks like studying or reading feel dull and unmotivating. High dopamine tasks like gaming or scrolling still feel rewarding, and that gap keeps you hooked. This explains why addicts struggle when quitting. Normal life feels flat compared to the rush, so nothing seems satisfying. The same cycle traps people hooked on games, porn, or social media. Once tolerance rises too much, they lose the ability to enjoy simple, productive activities. Which habit, like scrolling or gaming, do you think you could pause for a day? So what's the fix? A dopamine detox. The idea is to set aside a day without highly stimulating activities. By cutting off the spikes, you give your receptors time to reset. One note, if you're dealing with drug addiction, this isn't enough. You need professional help since withdrawal can be dangerous. For a detox, the goal is to avoid external pleasures for one day. 
No internet, no phone, no computer, no TV, no music, no junk food, no porn. You'll face boredom directly, and yes, there will be a lot of it. But some activities are allowed. You can walk, you can meditate, you can reflect on your goals, and write ideas on paper, not on a screen. It might sound extreme, but that's the point. Removing pleasure makes smaller things feel rewarding again. It's like always eating at a fancy restaurant. Eventually, plain rice feels unappealing. But if you're starving, that same rice feels amazing. A detox works the same way. Boredom resets your baseline. If you don't want to cut everything at once, try a smaller detox. Pick one day a week to avoid a single high dopamine behavior like checking your phone, gaming, binge watching, or eating junk food. Avoid just that one habit all day. You'll feel bored, but that boredom pushes you toward low dopamine activities you usually avoid. Reducing high dopamine activities helps, but the bigger goal is to tie dopamine to things that matter. You want your drive connected to long-term goals, not distractions. Here's how I manage it. I use high dopamine activities as rewards for completing hard work. I track my low dopamine tasks, cleaning, reading, exercising, practicing piano, and making videos. After enough of that, I reward myself at the end of the day with something high dopamine. The timing is key. If I start with the reward, I lose motivation for the hard work. That's why I do the difficult tasks first. My system is simple. For every hour of hard work, I give myself 15 minutes of high dopamine activity at the end of the day. Eight hours of work earns me about two hours of reward. You can adjust the ratio to fit your life. Just make sure the reward comes last. One warning, if your addiction is harmful, don't use it as a reward. Choose something healthier that you still enjoy. Personally, my weakness is the internet. I could lose hours there without noticing. That's why I need this system. It helps me keep control. And even with this setup, I still schedule full detox days with no high dopamine activities. To wrap up, it is possible to make hard tasks feel easier. But if your brain is overloaded with dopamine, you won't feel motivated to do the things that release less of it. That's why cutting back on high dopamine behaviors matters so much. If you struggle with motivation, start a detox. Step back from the high dopamine, or at least reduce it. That way, normal activities will feel rewarding again, and you'll stay with them longer. We're all dopamine-driven, and that's not bad. It pushes us to achieve goals and improve. The key is where you get it from. Will you spend it on short-term distractions or on long-term goals that matter? The choice is yours. Have you ever tried a detox or reward system? Share your results in the comments below. Thanks for watching.